And are you refreshed? Good. Now what? Hello. I got a question here. Sometimes I feel like, you have to excuse me, I'm a newbie, so. <laughs> I get this, like, it feels like it's energy overload sometimes. And what I mean by that, it seems like, like I'm sitting here in this room full of people, and it's like a television channel that's being flipped to all these different channels, like I'm feeling this energy and this, this, this emotion, this and that, and it's like sometimes it's overwhelming. It's that way for a lot of people as they move through life experience. And of course it's compounded when you get into closed spaces with lots of people. But that's a result of sort of practicing caring a lot how others are responding to you. We've been talking a little bit here today about the value of tuning into your source energy guidance. But most people don't do that once they become adults. Most people are really busy trying to make sure that everybody else gets them. And so you're sort of trolling all the time, looking for body signals and interested in what people are thinking and contouring your dialogue and your presentation in order to get the most positive effect from them. And it makes for a really chaotic environment because First of all, you are really not the primary object of everybody else's attention. And so <laughs> trying to be that can be a little overwhelming, but more important, and this is what you're getting to, it causes you to train yourself to be sensitive to things that you don't want to be sensitive to. It would be like walking into a bookstore and every book calling you. But if you have a very clear intention when you walk into the bookstore of what you're looking for, you'll be drawn to the book that will help you. And the ones that have nothing to do with what you're looking for will become irrelevant. Think about the Google search engine and how the better you are at framing what you're looking for, the more precisely it can bring you the results. And this energetic projection that you've got going on is the same thing. So the more you become aligned with who you really are and the less scattered your own energy is then the less you'll pick up on what's going on with everybody else how do i do that that's the problem it's like an example is my brother i would call him on the phone and we would talk my brother had three strokes after speaking with him over a period of time i start to feel his stroke i start feeling the numbness in the left side or when my mother who has alzheimer's dementia when I speak to her for on the phone for any period of time, I'm exhausted because I start to lose my memory. It seems like I'm taking on their energy and it's, it's exhausting. When Jerry and Esther were running around together in the monster bus, Jerry learned pretty early on. Esther did almost all the driving. Jerry was a really good navigator. Esther really liked to drive. It made a really good combination. But Jerry learned when he'd say, look over there, she'd drive the monster bus over there <laughs> because the bus tended to go where she was looking and so after a while he just pointed out things that were straight ahead right <laughs> straight ahead and in the same way your vibration does follow the object of your attention here's an important thing for you to recall around your analogy conversation that you just offered as you focus in that unwanted place you feel negative emotion because your inner being isn't focusing there with you your inner being is staying true to who you really are and what you really want for yourself and for your brother or for yourself and for your mother. We don't like these words very much, but Esther's going to use them because it's the best word that she can find for where we're at in this conversation is about mind control. But we'd rather soften that rather than mind control. We'd rather say focus. And rather than saying mind control, we'd rather say focus with the intent to feel alignment with your own guidance system. So there are a lot of people who know they're empathetic, they're sensitive to energy, but we don't want you to be sensitive to all of the energies. That'd be like having a really sloppy receiver in your vehicle that could tune into many different channels at the same time. And all you want to do is listen to some satisfying music and you're getting all this static and chat because your tuner isn't tuned. So that's really what it's about. It takes a little practice, but most of all, it takes understanding why you do it and why you do it is because you're trying to exercise your influence over them by getting them to see you as you want them to see you. And so you're real interested on an almost word by word basis. I say, 
this and then you respond and I say this and then you respond so you care too much about their response we want you to not care at all about anybody's response to you yeah. Esther saw a book title she didn't ever read the book she loved the title written by Terry Cole Whitaker and the book is what you think about me is none of my business well you have made almost everything that everybody thinks about you your business and so you're tuned to that and it will make you nuts it's driving me crazy yeah yeah <laughs> it's just a little sloppy tuning on your own and now we've had this discussion it could begin to change right away so want to go a little further with it you want to take the conversation for example were you aware of any thoughts you picked up on or better said how did you interpret some of the thoughts you were picking up on or was it just static in here in yeah. the room some of the thoughts is I can feel sort of positive emotions from people, the negative emotions from people. It's just scattered. It's just sort of like, it's just hitting me from all different directions and things. I find myself when I'm in a crowded room, I just want to go somewhere. So what that means is our power of influence, which is really, really good, didn't really reach you because we're good at this. We tune into this stream of energy and we don't deviate from it and we hold it and if you're in the vicinity you'll come with us that means that we weren't getting your attention because if we were getting your attention that would have not been your experience or is that an old story you're telling us is that an old story you're telling us a story in... did it happen here today yes and so it wasn't thought so much as it was emotions that you felt to me it's like a it's just like a, a static radio channel sometimes it's sometimes I can tune in on someone or, or tune in on something. I find myself at times like just sitting in the audience and I would sort of cross my legs like this and do this. I look at someone like a seat next to me. I'm in the same position they're in. Same legs cross. Well, we are really me. appreciating this conversation because it speaks so powerfully to everything that we want you to know first. And that is let your relationship with your source energy be what's dominant to you and most people first of all they don't really know that source exists for them like that they don't really know that source is interested in them like that they don't really understand that your inner being is projecting a steady thought that you could pick up on they don't understand that they have an inner being who has an opinion about everything that they have an opinion about so therefore they don't understand their own guidance system so most people have sort of been frantically searching for some form of guidance from someone and when you really really care about it then you're looking for it everywhere yeah I'm trying to separate mine from theirs is what I feel like I'm, I need to do it hasn't got anything to do with them mm -hmm. it's only about what's going on with you some years ago we offered an analogy a really good one really appropriate for this conversation we said imagine a light board about as big as this carpet and has all those little LED lights on it and you're one of the lights. so you focus on something and you light up based upon what you're focused upon and every other light on the board that's where you are lights up too and that equals your world that's who in the room is a vibrational match to you you can control how you light up so let's say they're all lighted up on something that is not beneficial maybe like disease or maybe like war or maybe like doesn't matter what it is but you're not because you've been meditating or you've been playing your musical instrument or you're tuned in tapped in turned on so even though they're lighted up that way they have no influence and no attraction power in your life experience because you're offering a different vibration so what we're getting at is you pick the tune that you're strumming you pick the vibrational frequency that you're broadcasting and only things that are a vibrational match to that would be in your sphere of influence or you in the sphere of that influence does that make sense yes that makes total sense something else or something more about well, that? that's just about it it's just that I just feel like I just need to learn how to control myself a little bit more and it's just I, do, I just feel start. lost you got to get a head start Jerry used to say we'll dart in and we'll dart out you get in and then you get out do you meditate yes I do so when you find that alignment and then you enter a room much less of that would happen because you've tuned into the frequency is really who you are and all that conversation that we had earlier about your power of influence when you're tuned in your leverage is so much greater so 
what you've been talking about here is we love you very much you know what's coming next <laughs> sloppy thinking and the reason for it is caring way too much about how others are responding to you Esther has been watching something maybe some of you have too and it has made her come to some very strong conclusions for herself and that is always be true to myself and don't poison the well and don't lie and so as Esther found herself saying that she thought that's interesting because I never thought of myself as somebody who is lying or who would lie who would need to lie or who would want to lie so she thought about that off and on for a day or two and then she noticed that sometimes she wanted to guide a person into a specific way of thinking and so she would specifically contour her story in order to elicit from them what she most wanted Ooh. <laughs> and then she thought this is not really being true to me this is altering myself in order to evoke from them something wanted Ooh. Ooh. that must mean I don't really trust my alignment I don't really trust yet that in that alignment all things will acquiesce around me I'm still trying to do it a little bit in the physical way of doing it and that's what you're talking about here when you're really tuned into who you are then it doesn't matter so much to you from your standpoint in other words it's one thing to want to persuade them in order to satisfy something in you that you could be getting from your inner being we call that looking for love in all the wrong places and it's another thing to be doing it in order to influence them to their alignment and so you're doing some of each of that enough enough thank you, thank you.